It takes more courage than for a man to examine the dark corners of the soul, more so than it takes for a soldier on the battlefield. Well, I began to ponder on that thought. And it took me a while to get to my point, but it took me a while as I thought about one of my favorite books, Proverbs 23, 7. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what does this tell me? If it, if it gets to a point where a man has no other accountability other than himself, then he has no one else to judge for who he has become. He only has his thoughts to blame or to say, this is who I am. But as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. There's another great quote that I love that says, a man becomes what he thinks about most of the time. So I ask you today, the question I've asked you to ponder on as I speak here today and beyond, is who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You know, we may have heard this in a lot of times, maybe in negative context. I've heard it in lines as someone cut to the front of the line. Who does he think he is? I've heard it addressed to me when I've gotten favor in different circumstances. Who does that guy think he is? I tell you what, something to think about. As I began to research this subject, I realized that the human mind, the average human mind, has anywhere from 50 to 70,000 thoughts in one day. 50 to 70,000 thoughts in one day. So with all these thoughts going on in our head, a lot of times unconscious of what they really are, with all these thoughts going on, how do you discern who you are? How do you discern who you will become? If the saying is true that a man becomes what he thinks about most of the time, how do you channel these thoughts to become, if you're not proud of the person you are, a better person? Well, I remember as a kid, one of my favorite snacks, if you will, was Cracker Jacks. Now in this Cracker Jack box, I won't lie, one of my favorite prizes was the magnifying glass. And why as a boy was this one of my favorite prizes? Because it was the gift that kept on giving as I was able to go out and play with that magnifying glass. And what I would do was I would burn pieces of paper and sometimes I would burn ants, but Please don't tell anybody. <laughs> but the particular thing that I loved about it was looking up at the great sun. And this is how I want you to imagine your thoughts. Your thoughts, in this case, would be the sun. Now, in order to take that sun and be able to burn those ants or to be able to burn that paper, the thing that I had to do is I had to focus the sun's rays to a concentrated dot. And once I got to that concentrated dot, that sun was magnified a thousand times and was able to burn through pretty much anything I focused that little dot on. That's the same thing we have to do with our thoughts. We have to do as I like to call, you have to be the watcher of the watcher. There's always thoughts going on in your mind. You have to discern which ones that you want. You have to be like that magnifying glass, and you have to magnify, or you have to concentrate your thoughts. You have to know what you want out of life. And as you begin to concentrate those thoughts, you begin to think about that thing more than anything, because that's what you'll become. One of my favorite movies is a movie called For Help. And there's a young lady by the name of Abilene. And she's keeping a little girl by the name of May. And one day, Abilene pulls May up. She sits her on her lap. She begins to rock her. And she begins to tell her, you is kind, you is smart, Now what was 
Abilene doing to man? Abilene was setting the foundation of this little girl's thought process. She wanted to ensure that she would be a great person in life. So she began with her thought process. And this is what we all have to do. We have to examine our heart. One of, our, one of my other favorite quotes comes from a guy by the name of Socrates. And Socrates says, clearly, the unexamined life is not worth living. The unexamined life is not worth living. So this tells me we have to go back and constantly reevaluate ourselves. We have to constantly reach into those deep corners of our soul to examine who we are 